Okay, let's try one more example of similar type to the very last one that we just did. Um, same exact direction, so we'll do the same thing. I'm going to start by sketching a right triangle. These don't have to be drawn to scale. I have cotangent, which is 11 over 3. Now, uh, cotangent is tangent reciprocal. Um, let me just kind of set all these up. I really do recommend writing them like this. I think if you write them like this after a few times you'll easily remember which ones are reciprocals of each other if you kind of pair them like this. Okay, so I know cotangent is 11 thirds, which means tangent is 3 elevenths. And tangent is the one I bother to memorize. Uh, tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So certainly not drawn to scale, but it doesn't have to be. I just need to know where are the opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. What are they? Um, I do need the hypotenuse here, so I need to do 3 squared plus 11 squared equals c squared. That's 9 plus 121. So c squared is equal to 130. Um, let's see, 130 does not divide by any perfect squares. So c is just the square root of 130. Okay, so the sine is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. This one divided by this one, and that divides by a radical. So the sine, let me write that down here, um, the sine would be 3 over square root of 130. I need to multiply the radical up to the top so the sine is going to be 3 square root of 130 divided by 130. Now the cosecant is just sine's reciprocal. I don't want to reciprocal this as it's going to put the radical back on the bottom. I'm going to have to do the same thing. But I can reciprocate the original and it would be the square root of 130 over 3. Easier to do like that. Um, the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Again, take that hypotenuse radical and rationalize it up to the numerator. Cosine is 11 square root of 130 over 130. Um, for the secant, I need the reciprocal of this or the reciprocal of this form, which is easier to write, square root of 130 over 11. Okay, next we're going to look at how we can evaluate trig function values with a calculator. Um, now it's important to check, and we'll do this almost every problem that you do. Uh, your calculator uh, can do both degrees and radians. Uh, you are going to have to check often uh, which mode the calculator is in, and you might have to put the calculator um, in the correct mode to work the problem out. So that is kind of a... Uh, it's an important detail to make sure that we're looking at. Okay, so let's kind of show how to do this. Okay, use a calculator to evaluate. So let me get my calculator. Um, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see the calculator screen, but you can maybe follow the button pushes here. Um, I want to first start, let's start with sine of 74 degrees. I have to make sure my calculator is in degree mode first off. Um, so the mode button right here on the top, very near the top. Uh, the third one down you have the option of choosing between radian or degree. Uh, if you've never done anything with your calculator before, it's probably defaulted, um, I want to say maybe on to degree, but if it's not, just hit enter on degree so you're good to go and you can quit out of that. Um, once you're in the right mode, then to do sine of 74 degrees, the sine, cosine, tan buttons are right here. So it's sine 74, enter. Um, I'll use probably four decimal places, 0 0.9613. If that's hard to read, please get out your own calculator and, and try it as well just to make sure you're doing uh, just fine. Um, now the next one, let's just go down here, secant of 49 degrees. Let's just stick with this one because it's another degree problem. I'm already in degree mode over here. Now you'll notice secant is what I'm after and there is not a secant 
button. Um, all the calculator gives me is sine, cosine, and tangent. Well, there's not a secant button because we can find secant easily using the cosine button. Secant is cosine's reciprocal. So if I do the reciprocal, which is 1 divided by cosine, so 1 divided by cosine of 49 would be secant of 49. And again, to four decimal places, I have 1.5243. Okay, let's try these other problems here. Now, um, there is no degree symbol, so it should be obvious that these are not degree measurements. These are radian measurements. So the first thing I need to do is go into the mode, go down to that third line, I need to highlight radian. Okay, now the calculator is going to compute radian values. Um, I want tangent of pi over 12. So hit the tangent button, the pi, you please use the pi button. Do not use a decimal for pi. Use the pi button. So tangent of pi divided by 12, hit enter. Again, I'm going to use four decimal places, 0 0.2679. Uh, cotangent, uh, again, there's no degree symbol. So even though I don't see pi, uh, the lack of the degree symbol tells me this is a radian measurement. So I'm already in radian mode. I want cotangent, which is the reciprocal of tangent. So it's one divided by tangent. So one divided by tangent of 0.89. Again, I'll use four decimal places, it would be 0 0.8100. Okay, a couple other examples. Um, solve the triangle for all its unknown parts. Okay, so there are six parts of this triangle. There are the three sides and there are the three angles. Um, I want all six of them. I'm given two. Uh, I'm actually given three. I know what the angle C is. Uh, the angle C is 90 degrees. Yeah, so I might start with the angle beta. Um, we know that in a triangle, or hopefully we know, all angles add to 180 degrees. Therefore, if I know alpha, angle A, alpha, and I know angle C, I should be able to take them away from 180 and get angle beta. So I would start with angle beta, it's 180 minus the 90 minus the 20 and angle beta would be 70 degrees. Okay, I've got all three angles known. And if you want, I mean, you can, it might help even just kind of write them in the triangle, then you know once everything's written, they're all done. So this is 70, this is 20, this one is of course 90. All three angles found. Now we also need all three sides. We know this one is 12.3. We don't know the other two. So that's where we're going to go next. And uh, to find one of the sides, either B or C, involves trigonometry. Uh, you can find whichever of the two remaining sides you want to find first. It doesn't matter which one you find first. Uh, let's say that we find B. Okay, so we're going to look for side B. Now, we need to pick one of the acute angles. Um, I'm going to go with angle alpha just because it was given, um, but I could just easily choose beta here. So um, if I choose alpha, this angle here, the side that I know is opposite. The side that I'm looking for is adjacent. Which of the three original trig functions would use opposite and adjacent? And the answer is tangent. Um, so we're going to set up an equation to solve. We're going to say that the tangent of my angle, tangent of 20 degrees, is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. And I've got an equation now to solve. Um, to solve this for the B, I would multiply both sides by B. So I would have B times the tan of 20 degrees 
equals 12.3 and then I would divide both sides by the tan of 20 degrees. And that would give me B solved for. Now this is calculator work. Um, notice that it's in uh, degree mode or it's in degrees so make sure your calculator is in degree mode. I'm going to do 12.3 divided by tangent of 20. And I get B to be 33 0.8. Okay. Again, I found that number with the calculator. No mental math there. Okay. Alright, to find the last of the three sides, you could set up another trig equation like this. Or, since we know um, two of the three sides, we could just do Pythagorean's theorem again. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that. I'm going to find C with Pythagorean's theorem. 12.3 squared plus 33.8 squared equals C squared. And I'm going to let the calculator help me out a little bit. So that gives me C squared equals 1293.73 if I take the square root of that, I get, if I round to the nearest tenth, I get 36.0. Now as a nice little spot check at the end of your work here, the hypotenuse should be the biggest of the three sides, and it is. Also, we probably should know this relationship. Uh, across from the smallest angle should be the shortest side. Next largest angle is the next longest side and the largest angle is the longest side. So that all kind of matches up the way it should.